This episode of the Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review is brought to you by Draft. Draft is the best way, the most enjoyable way, and the most profitable way to play fantasy sports in a snake draft format. You can play football, baseball, hockey, golf, or basketball. Hit up playdraft.com backslash BQ to get in on the action with a free $3 entry upon your first deposit. Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge. I'm Adam, your host today, and we're doing the Impact Review. And as always, I'm joined by Ro. Hi, Ro. Hey, Adam. Welcome back, man. Yeah, well, uh, as Ro just said, uh, I've been away for the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we're back to our usual team. And, and, and a big thank you to, to BQ for filling in for me there. Uh, and also, I'd just like to say thank you for all the nice messages that were posted and um, in the comments section asking uh, when I was going to return and those kind of things. Maybe they were asking because they, they do when to tune back out when I was returning. I don't know. But uh, thanks to Rob's voice, especially who asked last week. And I think Average Boy the week before. But yeah, that's me now. Uh, back in the saddle although uh, next week i am on a, on a holiday unfortunately so once again you'll always probably be getting bq next week but um yeah it's great to be back and uh how have things been how have you felt about the last few shows there bro um you know what they've been a little bit hit and miss um but for the most part i want to say the month of march was a good month for impact overall yeah, absolutely. I, I think, uh, you know, I've been watching them, even though I haven't been able to get onto the, the podcast to, to record. Um, I have been watching them and uh, they, they, they've been pretty solid. And, and that's the, you know, that's not being negative about it. It's not being positive. They've been really solid with some excellent parts. And I think this week's show, when we get into it, it's pretty much the same. There was more excellent parts this week than the last few but there was still something missing and i'm not quite sure what it is and maybe we'll discover it as we get into the review uh but before we do as always we have a few shout outs to some of our friends and colleagues out there who are doing good work uh other podcasts other people on twitter those kind of things so this is why i'm going to hand it back over to ro to tell us who those are yeah just the usual the wrestling personified podcast they also do an impact review tremendous job you want to check them out and then for all our Facebook users, check out the Impact Fan Zone. You know, great for Impact Wrestling discussion. Yeah, and obviously we've got our own uh, Facebook page as well, the Impact Lounge, so make sure you do uh, look at that. And as always, you know, we love your comments on these reviews, so please make sure that if you have listened to the show, leave us some comments, leave us some questions, those kind of things. We'll be more than happy to answer them as best as we can. So, um yeah, let's dive straight into it. Unless there's anything else that, uh, with my two week hiatus, I've forgotten to mention, Rose. Anything else before we dive into it? Nah, man, let's get into it. Cool. So, what? Did, what? Before we look at the individual segments, what did you think of the show itself? I thought this one, just from if I'm comparing it to the past two episodes, this was a nice rebound episode because, like I said, you know, the past two, you know, they've been a little bit hit and miss, but overall, the month of March has been solid and. I really thought this episode closed off a great month for Impact. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about our favorite bits as we go through. But, uh, yeah, that there was some really excellent stuff in this. Is, is this the last one or is there a couple more before the pay-per-view? I, I, I'm losing track of time here. You know what? I think there's the next set of tapings we're going to get is going to be after the pay-per-view. So, yeah, we still got a few more leading up to the pay-per-view. A few more for the both of you, fair enough. All right, well, let's dive into it. And um, it started off this week with uh, a, a backstage segment of, um, well, Austin Aries challenging for the Global Grand Championship. And uh, there was Matt Sadal and Josh Matthews having a little conversation about it. Josh not so keen to put the title on the line. And there we had, uh, you know, Aries, well, Matt accepted the challenge, much to Josh's chagrin. So... Yeah, this is a bit strange for me because I actually thought Josh was the title holder. So I didn't quite get how Matt could defend it on his behalf on this one. Because I actually thought, you know, when you see all the graphics, the impact of him putting out those kind of things, it says, you know, hashtag and new champion kind of thing. So uh, I actually thought that Josh was the champion. I don't know if you, you had the same thoughts. Yeah, I thought it was confusing because when it was originally advertised and when I had seen that and I spoke with BQ about it on most recent review i said you know it really doesn't make any sense because if you're giving josh the grand championship and awarding him the champion he should be facing austin aries but i guess since 
Josh's color commentary, you know, they figure like he's not a wrestler. So, I mean, it was kind of just one of those things that they kind of backed themselves in the corner when they even awarded him the championship. But the one thing I did like about this segment was the fact that Austin Aries explained his reasoning for not wanting the X Division Championship, not putting the belt down, but just saying, hey, I've held it enough. I've taken that belt to new heights. I've done everything I could with that belt. So he put it over. And another thing that I like, um, Saito, I think it was Saito who brought it up, you know, was talking about, uh, you know, you just want to win this for option C. I hope they do away with the option C. I thought when they first um, brought, you know, tried it out you know, I, th I know it was Austin Aries I thought it was fine but then to keep doing it essentially became like a briefcase that you cash in and I feel like when you do it like that you dev devalue the X Division Championship so I kind of like how Seidel was kind of like you know all defensive like oh you're not going to get this you know and just so you can cash it in or whatever so I, I like that yeah, I agree, by the way, about the devaluing of the belt. But the way I read it, I might be complete wrong, was that he didn't want to give him the X division because he wanted to cash in for option C. And I could be completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. This is why why would why would Austin Aries need to cash in if he's already champion? You're you're correct. No, 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 as in um, Seidel wanted to, to keep it because he intends to cash it in as option C. But that's the way I took away from it. But you're, you're quite right. They, it was good that they brought up the lineage of the belt. And yeah, I really like the fact that it, it, the belt wasn't buried. It was, you know, yeah, I've got this belt. I haven't had that one. I've had that one lots of times, so I'm not interested in it, which is good, you know. And it kind of plays in with that Ring of Honor uh, TV championship belt as well, that uh, Austin Aries is going for, you know, saying that I've never held that one. It's not because he's saying that uh, the impact one is the equivalent of the TV title and Ring of Honor. He's just saying that I haven't had that one, so that's why I want it. So anyway, yeah, I thought it was a good segment, but a little bit confusing. What would be interesting to see is, uh, and maybe I should check this out, I, I, I don't know if on uh, the Impact page whether they have a list of champions, although it would be Austin Aries now, but if Josh has been recognized as a holder of the belt, in the history of it. Uh, I don't know where you check that, whether it's uh, Wikipedia or something like that. But uh, yeah, it'd be interested to see if he was credited as a title holder. Anyway, um, after that section, we, we got into uh, an X Division match. And I know we were talking about this beforehand, but it's uh, sometimes quite annoying where they throw these matches together uh, for no real reason. There, there was, you know, there was nothing to this match, was there? There, there was no reason for having it because PT's already got the next title shot when he wants it. Uh, so this kind of seemed like filler to me. Yeah, it was just one of those. They they went back to the well on this, and I mean, it's been a while, but you know, you think about late last year getting the random exhibition matches, and you know, the match was fine, but it's kind of one of those things, and you hate to be too technical about it, but. Essentially, what were they fighting for? You know, I thought, you know, you could have done a singles match, you know, maybe a tag match, you know, if you're going to do like a kind of thrown together match. But, you know, when you have, you know, fatal four ways, there needs to be some some kind of implication of the match. And I mean, you could say, you know, the winner of this, you know, can put them in line for a potential future X Division title shot. But as you stated, Pete Williams already has the briefcase, so, you know, he already has one. So it, it was just kind of one of those thrown together matches. But with that said, man, um, the thing that stuck out for me, Ishimori, his work in the X Division by far, man. I mean, I hope they can keep this guy. I know there's been r rumors that he's trying to go over to the other company, but uh, w the work that he's done for the X Division, man, it's just been incredible. 100% agree. Um, I, when I was watching the match, all I could think of was, have I ever seen Ishimori botch a move, you know, or even make it look, you know, half-assed? And he hasn't. Everything, every time he steps into that ring, he looks like the ultimate wrestler, doesn't he? he just everything he does is absolutely spot on. And you know what? If he could speak English or American or whatever you want to say, he would be an absolute top star in any company. Uh, because he, he really is that good in the ring. But, um, yeah, you're right. I also agree on the, 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 the value of that match. You know, that was where the commentators should be selling it. Whether there is any implications of the winner, you know, moving up the rankings or whatever, but the commentators kind of missed that opportunity to really sell, you know, winning the match and what value it would have for the wrestlers. Um, the one guy I don't really like in all this is uh, Rohit Raju. I... 
I don't really see much in him. You know, he, has he won a match yet? I think he's eaten, either eaten the pin or he's certainly been on the losing side of every match that I can remember. But he just doesn't look like a credible challenger to anything at the moment. He, he just seems like a, a bit of a jobber. And bearing in mind he's part of the Desi Hit squad, it seems really, I don't know, dead on arrival. Is that the best way of putting it? It, you know, for him, <clears throat> excuse me, and I mean, the jury's still out because we've heard of the Desi Hit squad, but we haven't seen any follow up. He actually won a match on um, Explosion, but the thing with him, I would, I really think, kind of messed him up. And like I said, still the jury's out. Was you know he came in as Hakeem Zayn, and you know we were introduced to him as being the one who won the the winner of Global Forge. So, you know, essentially you don't expect him to be winning anytime soon because he's kind of like the rookie, quote unquote, you know, trying to, you know, really, really trying to hone his craft. But then you do the name change, you know, and, you know, look, I got, I guess you want to say a little bit of a gimmick change where he's supposed to be, you know, Rohit Raju and stuff. And there really hasn't been any progression with him. But I think we have to wait and see. Um, I was talking to BQ about this. I think maybe we'll see more of the Desi Hit squad. If not at the pay-per-view, maybe, you know, the next set of tapings. But there really hasn't been much of follow-up outside of the name change and that he's associated with the Desi Hit squad. Well, I think they missed an opportunity here because as Hakeem Zayn, yeah, as you're quite right, you can, you can understand why he's eating pins and those kind of things, learning his, his profession. And really, where I think the Desi Hit Squad should have been introduced, as in someone who comes in and re, you know, reinvigorates him, you know, gives him the skills to go on and do something better, to start getting wins, to just change his name without any explanation, really, and just say, no, he's part of the Desi Hit Squad now. It's kind of lazy to me. And that's one thing this regime, I don't think ever has been. I think they've built storylines really well. But I think they've missed an opportunity here of just randomly renaming him, having none of the rest of the Hit Squad around him, and him just, uh, you know, as I said, eating bits along the way. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting what, what happens when they do arrive. Uh, I'm guessing tag team, is that what you're thinking as well? You know what? I mean, I guess he could be an X Division guy. I think the best use for him now, and you know, when I seen him on uh, Explosion, I thought that was, that's a good way to use him. Let him kind of uh, develop his character on Explosion, and then that way, when you know the Hit Squad finally appears, you know, at least we're we you know we're familiar with him and he has his character down. I will say, let me point this out, and I want your take on it. What do you think of the Suicide character? Ah, well, I'm glad you asked that because I was going to ask you the same question. Um, I, I know that he's not liked generally, I would say, but on on uh, social media, internet, whatever you want to say. But I actually quite like him as a character. And I think it's a good way as well for someone to, to hone their craft under the mask. Uh, I know he, he started off as a computer game character and people use that as a reason to bash him. But I actually quite like the character. And let's not forget, there's been some amazing wrestlers under the mask along the way. So... I, I I quite like the character, but I just wish that, I don't know, maybe he was given something a bit more to do. I, I think the last time he was actually seen as a, someone proper was um, when it was TJ Perkins under there, and, and he changed to Manic. That was the last time that the suicide character was, was given any kind of storyline other than just appearing, or, you know, and being thrown in these random matches. My only problem with the character is if they were getting somebody, like, say, they signed that, you know, we never seen before... And they were having him uh, as the suicide character. I'm fine with that. I just hate, like, say, um, I don't know who's under the mask. Now, I had heard it was uh, Caleb Conley. But for me, I prefer to see Caleb Conley wrestle as Caleb Conley instead of as suicide. Because, you know, anytime you see suicide wrestle, that means we're not going to get a chance to see it, whether it's Caleb Conley or whomever is Don in the mask wrestle that particular episode of impact so that's just my thing but yeah like i i i, I wonder like you know because i had expected this character to really be phased out because you know his claim to fame was off the video game that came out almost a decade ago but i mean with the x division being somewhat thin as it is i mean i guess he fits i mean in, in, when you look at this match this is essentially the x division um i don't know what happened to desmond xavier we need him back so, you know, that hopefully that's one thing after the, the pay-per-view, you know, next set of tapings, you know, we can uh, replenish the X division as well as some other divisions because a lot of the divisions are thinning up. 
Just just on who's underneath the mask, I've got a feeling it's not Caleb. I know it was at the last set of tapings when, when, you know, before Caleb joined the cult of Lee, I know Caleb was underneath it, but he didn't seem to wrestle in the same style as when Caleb did him, you know, if you sort of mean. Um, It it looked like someone else. And I I, I don't know who it was, but I've got a feeling it wasn't Caleb this time. But I'm more than happy for our listeners to tell me otherwise. But I know the last time at the last set of tapings it was Caleb you know maybe that was six months ago but I'm not sure if it was this time I've got a feeling it could have been someone else but well we'll never know but yeah if they're going to keep him around they've got to do something a bit more creative than just oh it's suicide you know another wrestler let's give him something to do you know and in the same way they did when TJ Perkins was underneath it anyway well let's move on anyway um Next we, oh, sorry, P.T. Williams won the match, by the way. I suppose we should have said that with a Canadian destroyer on uh, suicide. Um, Okay, so then uh, post-match, P.T. Williams says he's cashing in at redemption against Matt Seidel. So I think we all saw that coming anyway. Now, is redemption, is that in Orlando or is that at the Windsor tapings? Do you know? I believe it's in Orlando. It's in Orlando. I was going to say, if it was at Windsor, you would you would put your house on the P.T. Williams winning in Windsor. But uh, yeah, well, any predictions at this point? And for once, we can have a prediction because it's not uh, it's not been taped or decided yet. <laughs> um, I can see, due to Josh interference, um, Seidel retaining the the exhibition championship. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I got to go the other way. Because PT has been super over since he's been back, and uh, I, I'm going to go for a PT win, and, and then Seidel to go on to do something else. What I don't know yet. Right. Okay. I thought the next segment was fantastic. Uh, Mackenzie Mitchell with Eli Drake. Eli Drake is, without a doubt, the biggest star in this company. I, I mean, he can hold. Yeah, he holds his character brilliantly, but he holds the attention on every single promo. And I thought this was a great promo. Yeah, he, um, I mean, there's, I gotta agree with you, everything you said, man, every time he gets on the mic, it's just, you can tell, and I don't know if you can catch this, he really, you know, takes honor in his craft, you know, whether it's promos, even in the ring, and not that he's a super flashy guy, but you could tell, you know, he doesn't cheat us uh, effort by far. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll come back to because there's another promo coming up with him as well. So we'll talk about it a bit more on that part. So then we get, obviously, the review, um, you know, in front of the computer screen, the green screen of all the upcoming matches. Uh, I just nothing really I wanted to, to point out other than, as usual, when I do these reviews, I always point out something really random that bothers me. And in this segment, the thing that bothered me was both of them were wearing ties and the knot on their ties were as wide as their necks. I, I don't know if it's a new style or fashion thing, but once again, one of those little irritating Adam spots uh, for all of you to go back and check out and see if I'm going insane. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to comment on this one? No, nah, not at all, man. Um, okay, so then uh, what they did do very well was that uh, they, they also talking about how Eddie Edwards has, has gone down to Ohio, and they they built that up very well, saying you've got to see the footage from this. So, um, so we saw a little sneak preview that he was standing on the outskirts of Ohio, looking at the city lights, and uh, obviously that we're going to be seeing a bit of that later on. So next we had the Undead Bride. Uh, I haven't been here for the last two weeks, as our regular listeners will know. Uh, so I haven't really commented on this, but to me, I mean, obviously she's had this character on the Indies, but it's very, very similar to like a mixture of Rosemary and Laurel Van Ness to me, <laughs> this one. And uh, I think it's very interesting, but the crowd are just are not buying it at the moment. Yeah, that was one of my worries when she had debuted last week. Um, we've seen a uh, Braxton announcer, so I guess... For the time being, there's some type of association between uh, Braxton and Sue Young. But yeah, that was one of my worries was the similarities. But then in this match, I was able to see some difference because I think we're harping back to old Rosemary compared to now. You know, the Rosemary now, since she's become face, I mean, she's kind of like a, I don't want to say a friendly clown-like character, but she's not as dark as she used to be compared to when she was uh, a heel, you know, in early decay. 
So I see the difference now because with Sue Young, she's playing more of the the dead bride. And once again, I think it's just fans. Some of these fans, especially in the Impact Zone, either not familiar with her or, like you said, probably looking at it as like, oh, this is you know somewhere to kind of like Rosemary. And you already know somewhere down the road, her versus Rosemary, that's going to be a match we're getting, you know. But um, as far as the match, it accomplished what it need to do it needed to do. And that was put over Sue Young strong. I will say this, and it's just a uh, minor gripe. You know, Amber Nova, we've seen her around a lot. She's pretty much been Impact's resident enhancement talent for the knockouts. But I do think in the foreseeable future, they should try to pick up other locals just because any match you see Amber Nova in, you already know what the outcome is. And I mean, I know you could say that with any enhancement talent, but it would be nice, you know, you mix it up a little bit, you know, and as much as Amber Nova has been, you know, used, you would think they would sign her because like I said, the knockouts division as well is a little bit thin. You can use her as a good hand, you know, so, but outside of that, the match, it did what it needed to do, put over Sue Young strong, um, short, painless. There you go. Yeah, and, and also it's giving Braxton something to do as well, so that's not all bad. Um, he's he's really becoming a character I'm enjoying now. So, uh, yeah, it was good. It was fine. It was serviceable, but it was over really, really quickly. I mean, it poured Amber got no offense at all, did she? Anyway, okay, so uh, moving on. Now, we, we had uh, Johnny Impact segment next, and I know two, three weeks ago when I was last on the show, I was really slating the guy and saying that, uh, you know, I didn't like him. I thought he was terrible on the mic. He sucked. Um, but the last couple of weeks, he's grown on me. I, I, maybe it's because he's not in the title picture at the moment or something. But the bit with EC3 the other week where he, he walked past and, you know, saying you're getting fired kind of thing, that was funny. And this, this promo as well I thought was quite funny. It does help that you've got Jimmy Jacobs there, obviously. Any thoughts on it? Looks like we're getting a program between Impact and Kong Lu Kong, and I don't mind that at all because I think it gives Johnny Impact something to do while he's not chasing the Impact World Championship, and it gives Kong Lu Kong something to do because you think about it, last week after defeating Abyss, outside of that, he's never really been in a program with anyone high profile yet, and I think this gives him that opportunity. The only worry I have about this is because I think there's there's a lot of valuing in Congo Kong. You know, I think that he could be a good character that you can build mid card programs around. The only problem I have is that he's just come off defeating uh, defeating Abyss and to some extent Chandler Park as well. That feels like there's more mileage in that storyline. You know, when Chandler Park comes back or, or whatever it is, but it seems like that that's finished, which I, I found really strange. So that's that done. Um, and now you've got him facing Johnny Impact. So he's got some momentum by being the new monster on the block. And he's facing Johnny Impact. Can you see in any way that Congo Kong is going to beat Johnny Impact, who is seen as one of the top faces of the company? And this is my worry for this storyline. I just can't see it. Well, cheating by far. I think, you know, we could see a scenario because... And BQ and I, we were talking about this last week, and I know we, you and I had talked about this as well, and you had said you couldn't see it, but I can see them down the road, not anytime soon, trying to get Kongo Kong enough momentum where you can put him in the main event. Because like I said, you look at all the divisions, the divisions are really thin, and it's time to kind of mix things up. And even if you look at the main event, like essentially it's just been a rotation. Whoever's champion, you face Eli, you face Johnny Impact, and you face El Patron. And then, you know, it's just a cycle. So if you're able to put in, you know, whether it's a Congo Kong or Brian Cage or different people, it, it mixes it up and it freshens it up, freshens up the uh, main event. With that said, if they're going to embark in a feud, Congo Kong needs to go over. I think Impact uh, losing a feud with uh, Congo Kong, it doesn't hurt Impact. Impact already has the cachet. You know, it's just, I think just moving forward, they'll have to find something for him. I really think they should have him try to challenge for the grand championship, assuming that they keep it around. You know, you can always plug him back in the the world title picture later on. But I think Congo Kong, if they're going to embark in a few, Congo Kong will need to go over and I could see that happening. I would actually like to see Johnny Impact to the X Division. 
Um, because obviously it's not about weight limits, although it does seem to, you know, that's where that they've got it to. But I, I could really see him being in that AJ Styles of being a real flag bearer for that for that whole division. Because, you know, his moveset really lends itself to X Division stuff. So that's why I'd like to see him. But with regards to this feud, I, I hope Congo Kong goes over him, but I just can't see it. Anyway, let us know what you think, listeners. Uh, drop some comments and uh, tell us if you think this is a long feud or whether you think it's just uh, one match to hold, you know, uh, hold time while they move on to better, bigger and better things. Right. I'm going to be controversial here now because I know reading social media, everyone loved the Rosemary and Tyre segment backstage. Uh, I hated it. Well, before I tell you why, let, let's hear your thoughts, Ro. I liked it. It was it was uh, creative, to say the least. I mean, I really liked the spot of Rosemary diving off that trailer onto everyone. You know, it it it, it was something to progress the feud without them kind of being in the ring or you know being on the mic. So I had no problem with it. I I, I liked it. I thought it was nicely put together. Well, you've just hit the nail on the head. Why I didn't like it. I thought it was terribly put together. And I'm not talking about what they actually did in it, but more the editing of it. It really seemed like shoddy, you know, school project piece of editing on it. And, that, <laughs> and, and that's what bothered me about it. You know, I've no, no problem with it jumping off, you know, throwing trash cans, you know, Amber Nova once again, get, getting strangled by accident, all those kind of things I thought was good. But there was just some really bizarre cutaways on the actual you know, production of it. And it looked really like that. It looked like they took 20 takes for every spot and they just mashed them all together and, and hoped it held together. And for me, it, every time they, they did one of these little edits, it kind of really took me out of the moment and spoiled the whole segment for me. I think what they were trying to do was very good, uh, but it just didn't work at all for me. Sorry. Sorry. It just, I thought it was awful. Hey, we agree to disagree. That's okay. All right. All right. I, I'm sure our listeners will, will will let us know their thoughts on it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, don't let me down, listeners. Don't let me down. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, on to, as we're talking about terrible production values, I think it lends itself quite nicely to the KM versus Fala Bar match, which um, my, my, my boy um, came across uh, into the room when I was watching this. And he said, Oh, that doesn't look very good, Dad. What's where's all the crowd gone? You know, <laughs> and, uh, and it's a shame because I actually really kind of enjoyed the match, and KM was was, was brilliant as, as always. You know, uh, it was funny. I read someone say that KM is a charisma vacuum, and I just thought he's great, and I love the way he went. You know, he was mocking Falabar, and and Bar was doing all his stuff. I, I just thought it was a bit of fun. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, outside of the production, I I, I just thought. I think both these guys could afford a, afford a win. So to see them pair together, because I haven't seen since Follow Ball's arrival. He might have won once on Explosion. I don't know. And listeners, you can correct me. But I can't recall any wins that Follow Ball's picked up, where at least KM, while it's been few, I mean, I can recall some, you know, if I really thought about it. But, yeah, the production of this it just really just took me took me out of it. But KM gets to win, and good for him. Um, I like to see them try to find a place for him. I mean, I think there's somewhere you can plug him. And I, I really think after this pay-per-view, the Redemption pay-per-view, is we're going to give the uh, creative and, you know, the regime, you know, a chance to kind of um, – assess everything and where they want it, what they want to do with certain individuals and hopefully cam falls into that and even follow bar too as well yeah absolutely i think both of them could be really good mid-card players for the company um i can't see follow bar at the top although he's over with the crowd but you know he's always going to be a mid-card km I could see going on to be a main eventer. I really could because he's got he's got the build for it. He's got the chops for it. So you know I could see it, but he has to start getting some of these wins under his belt. But uh, I really liked it. Um, one thing I did notice about the match show was that the ring looked really really small. Um, I, I don't know if there's standard dimensions of rings, but it, it, I mean it looked like uh, you know in WWE where Shane McMahon goes coast to coast where he jumps across and, and hits the trash can. I think on this one, you could most probably have cleared the top rope from the other side. You know, <laughs> it, it was that small, the ring. But, um, uh, you know, you can't help it. If you go to these uh, th these other promotions, that that's what's going to happen. I think they said it was from Brooklyn, from memory. Is that right? 
Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, after that, uh, KM calls Falabar fat ass bar. Nice stuff. Nice work, KM. Nice work. Right. Okay. Then we got on to Lashley, Brian Cage, and I think for me, match of the night. I thought this was was awesome. Really, really good. Amazing. I mean, I really think Brian Cage. He really showed his uh, versatility as a performer. Because for a guy of that size to do the moves that he's capable of doing, we've seen him do a Rana. I, I know he had missed the moonsault, but just the agility that he has, man, I really think they're going to, you know, really do some big things with him. The one thing that I hated, though, and just the one little minor thing, and you tell me your thoughts. I really thought it would have been nice to see Cage hit the drill claw on Lashley. And seeing him use a lariat, I mean, I guess maybe they're establishing that as a secondary finishing move. But I really thought that could have made a statement. And I didn't understand why they they didn't go with that finish. I mean, I'm sure he can lift Lashley up for it. I mean, I don't know if they were trying to protect Lashley or what. But I really thought if they would have allowed Cage to hit the drill claw, that really would have made a statement. Because, you know, you're doing that to Lashley. You know, Lashley's been, you know, the dominant guy in impact wrestling for you know past couple of years so i really thought if he was able to hit that on last year that really would have made a statement but yeah match of the night by far uh, well, i agree about the finish by the way and the discus lariat um i think there's a few of them use it isn't it because moose uses it and austin aries also uses it i, I think it's a terrible finishing move or set up to finishing move really don't like it but uh you're quite right now was this lashley's last match or uh is he on the next two episodes? Do we know? Or um, I'm unsure. I I guess this probably probably is it. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I don't. I mean, I've seen spoilers, but I forget since you know a lot of times I have them all on one page, and yeah. you know the one day that I read them, and then as I'm watching Impact, I forget. And a lot of times too with spoilers, sometimes the people who are reporting them they report things inaccurately or you know put things in improper places, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but I could assume that this is probably his last match. I mean, we kind of seen with uh, LVN after dropping the belt to Ali, the Knockouts Championship to Ali. We haven't heard anything else from her, so maybe this is the way the way they're writing off Lashley as well. Do you know what? I, I had a, that hadn't even occurred to me that we hadn't seen LVN since dropping the belt. It's a shame actually because I, I would have thought thought she would have you know recorded a segment or something like that it would i tell you what would have actually been quite good for lvn is if they'd have dragged her off to the madhouse you know if she would have gone mad and they'd have had to restrain her and be carted off I, I think you know that would have fitted her character but anyway uh but back to back to this one yeah if that was lashley's last match it is a shame that they didn't let brian cage hit um the drill what's it called again the the drill claw yeah uh but uh I would, if there's another couple of weeks before the pay-per-view, hopefully they might have a, a rubber match, well, a rubber match, a rematch, and then uh, the third one might be where uh, we see Brian Cage hit it, you know, and to send Lashley home for good. But fantastic, and the agility of Cage for a man his size, absolutely phenomenal. Some of the stuff he did, uh, there was a, you know, there was a great um, tornado DDT off the ropes in there at one point. Yeah, lovely stuff, really, really good stuff. And you know, I wasn't sure about Cage, and I. I think I commented about a month ago saying I've got a feeling he's not that tall, but he didn't look any height difference to Lashley. So I was completely wrong on that one. Brilliant stuff. And, you know, dare I say that this is a guy who could be in the X division. I know they made jokes about it during the, the commentary, but he really could. He was that he was that good. Um, and hopefully they're going to carry on. I think you, you it was you just said it's something like um, a Goldberg type push. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and then, you know what, what makes it even better is because you see he's not limited offensively like his move said. He can do some things where when you think back Goldberg and a lot of his, um, you know, his early run with his squashes, he, you know, his move set was really limited. This guy has an arsenal of moves. So, you know, when he's facing stiffer competition or bigger names, we can see him break out some, some moves. So I really thought this helped his cause moving forward. I mean, I just... I think back on it, but guy that size is doing tornado DDTs, you know, Ranas and stuff. That that's very impressive. So this is a good get for Impact. Well, I, that was going to be my next question: Is it a get? Because obviously he's he's still in Lucha, 
And, uh, you know, we're seeing now there's a lot more handshake deals of those kind of things. If if I was in charge of the purse strings at Anthem, if I, if I was Ed, I, I would be making him the priority of the guy that they need to sign for the long term. Uh, I would say of all the recent acquisitions, he's he's the one who, who's got star power there. Oh, yeah. No, no, mo most definitely. Because, like I said, I mean, we all I mean, I think most of us agree, like, you know, keep Eli. But you got to have somebody for Eli to work with. And could you imagine, given their history, when these guys get to face with one another? I mean, for, you know, those of you listeners aren't familiar, they uh, used to tag on the indie scene, a tag team called Natural Selection. So with both of them on the roster now and, you know, Eli being the guy, you know, once Cage gets to that point, could you imagine the matches that, you know, these two could have? I mean, it's amazing. But don't forget, he's got the tag team belt title shot. There you go. Maybe you'll go with Cage. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, somehow, but there you go. That would be pretty cool, though. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so next up was Gail Kim talking to Ali backstage. And this, this is another segment that didn't really do much for me. Uh, it's reverting back to the Ali being ditzy character and Gail having to be on the screen again. I just thought this was pointless, although it did kind of bring back in Braxton Sutter being the problem as opposed to uh, Sue Young or whatever. So I, I suppose it did advance the, the storyline a little bit, but it did nothing for me. I thought about you when I seen Gail on the uh, screen. I was like, I can hear Adam saying, once again, it's all about Gail. I will say, <laughs> and not to get off topic, Gail looks amazing in this segment. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining, but I, I, I agree with you. I think with Ali, we're kind of seeing, you know, move, you know, take one step forward, two steps back. You know, we first see this attitude, this aggression. Then we see her resort back, you know, going to where she's, you know, I guess essentially doubting herself like, oh, I, I don't know, you know, Miss Gale, uh, the, uh, with Sue Young and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they need to really figure out what, what, what to do with her long term. The only way I hope that this storyline plays out, if they are going to keep doing this, going back to Gail, is that it eventually leads to an alley heel turn where she, she takes Gail Kim out. You know, yes, and destroy, yes. destroys it. That's the only way that I find this acceptable. Right. OK, so there we had. And this week, for some reason, in the UK, we did have the GWN flashback. And I, I know you guys talk about it quite a lot and saying that, you know, it always goes back to a time when the crowds were super hot. But this match was it was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, I, by the way, I, I didn't realize it was P.T. Williams, by the way, for a long time. I was thinking, who is that other guy in the ring? <laughs> You know, the the biggest problem with these have been, and I even on the most recent, because um, on social media, the Impact uh, Twitter handle, they always tweet out, you know, give us your thoughts, surveys, and, you know, BQ and I had talked about this. They need to shorten these flashbacks because the whole point of showing this flashback is to get um, people who are watching Impact to subscribe to the GWN app. But when you're showing the whole match, you know, and it could be used as filler, so to speak. But when you're showing the whole match, which what incentive does somebody have to get the GWN app? I mean, obviously there the, there's more matches there, but you're showing the full match. Um, this match was excellent. I just didn't like the ending. I felt like you know the guys worked so hard, and then you know you see the two uh, PD Williams and Chris Saban. You know they're holding on to the rope, both fighting to get the belt, then only for AJ to off the um rope jump and grab the title while they're working hard to get it while they're hanging on the the cable of the um ultimate x <laughs> so it's just kind of and we we've seen that with um i want to say most recently last year where somebody had the i think had the belt and it fell i don't know if it fell or something but trevor lee and he that's how trevor lee grabbed it and it just i feel like it cheapens it a little bit because you got guys working hard to get it and then just for some guy to capitalize on somebody dropping it and taking it well i, I personally i did like this finish it was a bit creative i thought but yeah it, it does ring a bell that i think it was um another x i think it was a big x that was hanging and it got dislodged during one of the matches and fell down and the ref put it back up and then later on it got dislodged again and i think it might have been aj styles or, or christopher daniels or kazarian or someone like that who just grabbed it and shrugged and went oh well <laughs> i've won so uh, yeah it does ring a bell that that uh, it fell and someone else picked it up right um next up we we're going back to uh 
Drake talking to Moose, trying to convince him that the tag team shot is better than the world title shot. Um, yeah, great plan. Uh, we all knew that it was never going to work, but it was a really good promo again. You know, I really liked it. And uh, what we got out of it is that I believe Eli is putting up his briefcase for Moose's to swap if Eli wins. But if Eli loses, then Moose gets both. Is that right? I think that was the, the outcome uh, of the promo. Is that right? No, uh, Moose proposed, which was odd, but really it's winner takes all. So the winner of this match gets both briefcases. And, you know, my one thing I was thinking was, you know, why would Moose <laughs> put, you know, put, because obviously his shot is, you know, his, since he has a world title shot, it's probably more valuable than the tag team. And that's not to diminish the tag team, though, but Moose has never held the world title. He's never held the tag, but obviously I know the opportunity at the world title, that's usually everyone's goal. But I want to say, and I mean, I don't know, because I don't, maybe we've been past that, but I want to say at these tapings, Moose got injured. I know, uh, I want to say last month he did, but then we still seen him work. But I, I thought he had, you know, sustained some type of leg injury. We'll see how it plays out. But mark my words, I've been consistent about this. This is just the start of the beginning of the feud between these two. I, I'm predicting right now, Slammiversary, these two are going to be fighting for the Impact World title. I don't know how we're going to get there. I told BQ this and BQ laughed at me. Uh, I, I still, now. <laughs> you, you have been saying it for a while. And I still think it's going to be um, bound for glory, if, if anywhere, where Moose wins it. But no, I, I'm fairly convinced that the, the, the rules of, of the, the match next week are no matter what, Moose gets a case. So if he loses, he gets the tag case. They swap if he loses. But if he wins, he gets both. I, I'm sure that's what the... But, there you go. If, if we can't decide and we couldn't figure it out, then that shows that it wasn't explained very clearly. But I think I, I think that's the, that's the reason why he's done it, is that he could end up with both, but he's at least going to end up with the tag if he loses. I think that's what the the uh, the stipulation was. But yeah, absolutely confusing. But it was quite good. Still, still nice, quite, quite a nice promo. And, uh, you know, uh, you could listen to Eli do promos all, all, all day long. But Moose held his own as well. So we'll see next week where that goes. So then we got the OVE segment. And I thought this was, once again, excellent. I thought it was really, really good. And really quite hard-hitting. You know, it looked real, didn't it? Yes, it did. Some of those uh, kendo shots were, were quite brutal. And it was one bit where, I think it was when Eddie got hold of the baseball bat. Uh, and obviously it must have been a fake baseball bat. Because he hit it across the back of uh, Jake Chris, didn't he? Full pelt. Uh, and you, you've got to think it must be some fake belt or some, uh, some fake bat of some sort. Because, uh, you know, well, I don't think you can do that to someone. <laughs> I, think, I, I, think, I think that's uh, going to cause some big damage, you know, spinal injury if it was real. Yeah, this 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 was interesting to say the least. I was thinking about those kendo shots too. I mean, it looked like to the face. I was like, good gosh. But, uh, you know, this whole feud, man, this has really been excellent. Just something they fell into based off of an accident. And um, I really I, I really felt like at this, because, you know, they were in Ohio, and once OV got, you know, had the number numbers advantage, it felt like it was a cult, cult-like following, because all you hear is everyone say, O-V-E, O-V-E, everything, everything. I thought that was pretty, pretty dope. I mean, the audience were well into it, weren't they? And, you know, that's that's what you want to see in the impact zone. And that's what sometimes is missing. And it's something that you notice on the flashback, you know, from the old, um, was it Destination X pay-per-view? I can't remember which one it was. But, you know, everything just seems so much more lively in certain arenas. And that impact zone does suck it out, you know, you know the atmosphere sometimes. But, yeah, I thought it was a great promo. And... Uh, once again, the commentary sold it really well, I thought, in this instance, because they said, you know, it wasn't a great plan, but they would most probably have done the same thing. So, yeah, it was good. Really, really good. And, and the hype video afterwards from Sammy Callahan, he, I think, out of any wrestler out there these days, he's most probably got his character down more so than than the majority of the others. I, I think he's he's excellent. And he's someone who I shouldn't like, but I think is just doing sterling work. Agreed, man. Agreed. Cool. Right. Um, yeah, so, well, th there's a question for our listeners then. Uh, can they think of any other wrestler, other than, I would say, maybe Eli Drake who gets it as well? Is there any other wrestler out there today who 
you know, lives and breathes his character and is totally committed to it. Um, I'll go for Richard Justice as my third option there. But anyway, that's another <laughs> one. <laughs> by, by the way, the Richard Justice stuff during the, the tie and um, uh, Rosemary bit was very funny. I did like that. That was about the only bit I did like. Although, once again, the editing of it was poor. Right, OK, on to the main event. Um, what's there to say? that th This was just one excellent match, wasn't it? But, you know, this could have been just as, easy, as easily an X Division match as it was the world title. You know, it, it, it just was fast, free-flowing, high-flying. It was great, really good stuff. Yeah, you know, it just comes to show you, man, and you look at the landscape of wrestling overall. I mean, 20 years ago, to see a match like this for the world title, mind you, participants that, you know, such as Aries and Seidel, given their stature, you wouldn't see anything like this because it was foreseen as, you know, foreign to have, you know, because you look at both these guys, X Division guys or cruiserweights that, you know, challenge for a world title. But you see how how well this match was constructed where Seidel, I mean, you know, once again, we're always talking about guys in the main event. I mean, down the road, I think if they wanted to entertain it, I mean, why not? He showed he could hang. And I mean, this I thought this match and the Cajun Lashley, these were two pay-per-view quality matches that we got to see on TV. And if anything, it just has me uh, excited for the pay-per-view even more like this. I mean, there was so much good, you know, so much good out of this. They in Austin Aries, let me just say, because I was super critical when they first took the belt off of Eli and put it on Austin Aries. But since they made him champion, whether it's promo work, you know, you know, um, you know, his uh, interactions with El Patron, how, you know, his matches that he's been having, he's delivered on all fronts, man. And I, I, I'm looking at it now. I mean, they made a great decision doing this. So, I mean, yeah, this is great. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, both, both, both these guys really brought it. And just bring it back to your, this was a, a pay-per-view style match. I, I think over the last month or so, even two months, Every episode has had a match that if you saw it on a pay-per-view, you'd be like going, that's pretty good, especially Crossroads. I think they had two or three on that that card as well, which were which is pretty awesome. You know, we haven't seen LAX this week. You know, the last time they faced Cult of Lee, that, that was an incredible match as well. So, you know, in the ring, they've been killing it. And, and the ratings have been reflecting that as well. You know, the ratings are going up week by week, slowly creeping up. And, you know, they're going to get to that magical 400,000, I hope, next week. I really hope they do because they, they, they really, really deserve it. You know, both the in-ring guys and also the management who have really got their act together. They've got some interesting mid card stuff going on, stuff that doesn't involve the belt, like Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, you've got, you know, um, ca minor characters who were suddenly interesting. If you'd have gone back six months ago, who would have thought that the crowd would like KM, Braxton, uh, Falabar, these kind of guys? Th th honestly, from top to bottom, they haven't got the AJ Styles of yesteryear, the Joes, the Angles. No, they haven't got those. But what they have got is they've built some really, really good characters. And if they can stick around for a good six to 12 months, these guys are going to be absolute stars and they'll take this program forward. I really believe that. I really believe they finally got the right mix of action, backstage stuff, everything. I think this is the position that the company's in now is the best it's been in a, in a long, long time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think the formula that they have, and while I know it can stink when we, you know, as fans invest in certain wrestlers and then we see them depart, but they got a system where you can say, and outside of a couple, like I would say really right now, Eli and Rosemary being the two top who I would deem irreplaceable, but really no wrestlers irreplaceable that they have. Like Lashley might be departing and I mean, look, I'm going to miss him, but enter, you know, Brian Cage and it's like, oh, okay, you know, we're seeing, you know, people who leave and then someone else comes in and then, you know, months in, you know, we forget about the person who departed. So they got something going on where they're able to, you know, bring up, bring aboard new talent and, uh, you know, really uh, uh, get the most out of the talent and creative. And we've seen, cause I was concerned at first because when the new regime came on board, you know, normally we've seen in the past where new regime comes aboard, you know, it's good for a couple months and poof. But we've seen the consistency. And like I said, I, I really think with the redemption pay-per-view, that's going to really be the opportunity to really make their mark. 
And I just think moving forward, if they go that the the pace that they're going, they'll be within good standing. Because I think what's happened in the past too is, you know, you get a little bit of gain some traction, and then you kind of try to rush the process. They need to just keep going the pace that they're doing, and it, it's all gonna come, and it's showing in the ratings. I mean, I, what they were almost four hundred k this the uh, previous episode. So yeah, I, I I'm in agreement with you. They this is the best the company's been in some time just while it's it's on my mind you said about the pay-per-view there and i I like the fact that they've got a pay-per-view coming up um the only thing i'd like to say is if they do keep redemption as a pay-per-view hopefully they'll bring it forward a bit in the calendar year because it seems this will be april june for slammiversary then you've got uh bound for glory in november october time so it it seems like they're, they're too condensed together i think that if you put this forward maybe to somewhere like march early march i think it would fit into the calendar and allow you to to let some storylines breathe a bit more you know if you're only going to do three but you know hopefully they'll go to four but yeah uh i think they're doing an excellent job um what other things well i didn't mention uh, about the 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 show uh alberto once again eating lots of steak uh, I don't get tired of that image as well. It just makes me laugh that that's what they've got Alberto doing, sitting around eating meat. <laughs> uncooked uncooked meat. It don't even look really thorough, mind you. <laughs> I just think it's excellent. Do you know, that, that's the kind of wrestling I could do. If they said to me, we're going to give you a contract, what are you going to do is sit around, laugh and eat meat? I could do that. But you know what? It seems so out of place. I could only, like my thought on it is they're having them do this just because Austin Aries is a vegan. So, And that's why I thought like with the whole feud that they have because essentially just kind of just came random like they had an interaction then poof you know they're phasing at the pay-per-view but it seemed like the whole thing is you know you're vegan i like eating meat so what i'm gonna do is every time you see me i'm gonna be eating meat i really hope this is the return of russo when it's going to be you know uh, a steak on a pole match or something like that <laughs> Uh, uh, you can't you can't meet uh, something on a pole match, can you? So let, let's hope it's a piece of a, you know, it's either a, ve- a vegetarian sausage or uh, or something like that on one end, and uh, the vegetarian kielbasa, and then on the other one you're gonna have a big uh, rib of beef or something that they could use as a as a weapon. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, just to add on to that, what I was waiting for, I don't know if you had seen the interaction that they had a couple weeks ago, where you know where they had the uh, El Patro interrupted uh, Aries's sit down interview. I was look, looking for El Patron to lay out uh, Austin Aries and then stuff some meat in his mouth. You know how, like, a lot of times you see something mm. like that? And I was just all like, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. I, I, <laughs> this whole the dur- Throughout this match, they kept showing El Patron watching while eating the steak. And, I mean, they zero in on the red on that. I mean, <laughs> it's like not even medium well, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh Keep it up. Keep it up. That's all I can say to to this regime. Uh, it's going well. Really hope for them that they don't have a drop back down. We see this quite often where we get a spike in ratings and then the following week it's back down to 265 or something like that. So let's hope they break the 400 and they stay around that mark. Um, do I think they'll do anything different if they get off pop onto another network? Possibly, but there's always that danger. As soon as you move network, you lose the viewership that you've got. And some of them, you know, and they can't be bothered to find a new one unless it goes to to a cable channel where, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be really featured. So uh, all in all, a good show. Um, some really great moments like, uh, as we said, the cage match, the, the main event, Eli Drake being very, very good. The Rosemary stuff, not so good. But overall, I thought it was an excellent show and really looking forward to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, um, excellent. Like I said, it was a nice rebound show from the past two. Um, next week, we got uh, Johnny Impact facing Taji Ishimori. That should be great. Then um, it's being promoted as case versus case. So I'm assuming it's winner takes all, but we'll see You know, next week uh, more of an explanation with Moose versus Eli Drake. Then we're going to get Ali calling out Sue Young. So the card looks nice. Um, let me ask you before we close out. I got just a quick topic now that it just that you just brought up. What do you think about them changing networks? Because this is something that I've seen talked about on uh, social media a lot. You know, with the ratings uh, going up, you know, a lot of people have thought, you know, maybe if they get on a bigger network, it would only help them. What What are your thoughts? And then I'll add mine after you finish. 
Well, it's quite hard for me because I, I don't know how the American cable system works, you know, for people with different packages. But obviously, you know, you read the dirt sheets and those kind of things and you, and you see that a lot of people moan that they don't have pop or if they do, they didn't know they had it, those kind of things. And, and, and I do think that if they got onto a more mainstream one, the kind of programming that they're putting out, I think, could draw in newer viewers. You know, I, I do think if they moved to... Is it USA Network where SmackDown's on or was on or whatever? You know, if they moved to, to somewhere like that or Spike, I do think they'd have to have a bit of star power to pull in a casual view. You know, bring in a Hulk Hogan, dare I say, you know, for a few shows, um, you know, just to bring in those uh, people who haven't seen wrestling in a long time. Do I think it would help? I'm guessing it would. Uh, but I, I also think there's a danger that if you don't, if you just move to another similar sized network, I don't think it will help. I think you've got to either stay where you are, build your fan base where it is, or actually go to somewhere where you're going to get a lot more coverage and a lot more homes. See, and my my mindset is like this. I look at, you know, wrestling as a whole now. It's not as, dare I say, as attractive where, you know, TV networks are kind of rolling over like, hey, you know, we want to, you know, we'll, we'll take you. And I mean, with this company, I mean, even when you think about when they had Spike, I mean, Spike, you know, they did, they um, promoted them somewhat, but that was a bit, you know, a big network that they were on. Then, I mean, the Destin Destination America debacle, I mean, ugh. I mean, that during that time, I really missed Impact a lot because, you know, due to not having the channel, but I really feel like their relationship with Pop, Pop doesn't seem to be embarrassed of Impact Wrestling. Like even when they were going through their stuff, that stuff, uh, Pop promotes Impact heavily, and I just feel like that relationship that they have with Pop to kind of do away to go on another network where you potentially don't have that same type of relationship, you're running the risk. And you know, like you were saying, yeah, you have a chance of of uh, growing your audience, but then you also have a chance of maybe the people don't follow. You know, what if they don't have that channel? And we even see too. Um, and like you were saying about the cable packages, a lot of people uh, cord cut or, you know, they watch impact, diff you know, whether it's stream or there's different ways for them to watch. So that's why I think to a lot of the viewership, it's probably more if you factored in that or people who DVR. But I've just been of the mindset, if you're going to get a second show, then fine. But I really don't want to see them leave pop only because I think the relationship that they have with pop and how pop has treated impact wrestling. I mean, it's been great. I mean, I don't recall. I can't even recall Spike having that type of relationship with them back when, you know, then TNA was, you know, at its high po highest point. So, you know, and maybe that's a question that we can propose for the listeners. What do you guys think of them, you know, put somewhere down the road, moving to another network? Are you on board with that? Or do you think they're cool with pop and maybe just trying to grow on pop? And also, if they are going to move, what 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 network would you like to see them on? And you can think big, you can think small, but just let us know and let us know the reason why behind you choose the one that you do. All right, well, bro, good question to finish on. I think that's pretty much us, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to drop some comments, some likes, those kind of things. And if this is your first time listening to the show, uh, hit that subscribe button. You know, uh, we're, we need to get up to that magical 4,000 number. So so keep going for it and uh, keep telling uh, your friends and family, uh, even if it is your little dirty secret that you like to watch wrestling, go on, come out of the closet and tell them. All right, on that note, <laughs> have a good one, Ro. All right, good time, Adam, everyone. Take care.